for us auto journalists, there are few days that are just mundane and boring. Then, there are days that keep us happy, being behind the wheel of something fun and exciting. And then there are days that can't get any better and well today it's one such day for me because I'm literally going to be in the lap of luxury. I'm Shubham Parasha, you're watching Parkless, your car app and let's start. Now I had to start my review from this very seat because this is ultimately the Range Rover autobiography and the long wheelbase version. So highlight of this entire cabin remains this very boss seat. Now you know we'll get to the features part in a bit because ultimately I just cannot complain there the cabin is loaded to the brim with all the creature comforts you can expect in a car. Shurwat karte hai with the feel and appeal of this cabin because that for me is the major highlight. So, in terms of legroom, you know, cavernous is an understatement because it is just ample. I have stressed my leg all the way and still I'm not able to touch the front seat. So, you know, in terms of legroom, again, I cannot just complain, and the seats are super accommodating for any frame and even for someone my size it feels very comfortable and the ride quality is so supple that even on rough surfaces you know i am just not feeling them those are not filtering inside the cabin and even you cannot hear that third especially at city speeds now if my chauffeur will be speeding and will be you know hovering over those speed breakers and all then you will be getting a bit of those jitters but nothing more than that so suspension obviously has been tuned to give you the supreme comfort and that for me is the highlight and that despite the lower profile of the tires so very well tuned suspension and even on indian roads it is not a problem because typically we have seen we have observed that european cars you know are a bit stiffer but this one just fits perfectly even for indian road conditions now coming back to the seat so under thigh support or headroom obviously they just don't need any mention because it's ample highlight here for the seat remains the adjustment you have the boss mode you have all the controls right here on the armrest three memory setting for all the seats inside the cabin and you can recline it all the way back or get a comfortable position right here even the seat has good reclining and you know you can even increase the under thigh support you can control all the blinds right from here right from the sunroof you can in fact select you know to what extent you want to keep the sunroof open so all those controls right here in this way that's been integrated in this armrest um, i can control blinds and windows of both side right from here or even the right side passenger can do the same also you know i have all my read light settings again right here so you know very convenient very easy in those terms and this is something that we have expected from a car of this class but let me show you this you go to seat settings and just click on recline and see the drill happening so the co-driver seat now is all the way front the footrests are coming out and i think i am just going to snooze for a bit now mostly you know when you're working or when you're you know on a longer commute this is the position that you would want to be in but if you really want to take a power nap inside the car you have that option as well so the footrest right here goes all the way up and out the seat goes all the way back 
and the footrest in the co-driver's seat again comes all the way up. Well, that's how you lounge in in a Range Rover. I can literally take a power nap here and just snooze. Well, quite a relaxing time it was, thanks to the supple ride quality and sumptuous cabin. Chaliye, ab wapas kaam pe lagte. Now, I have more settings here to show you. So, for climate control, obviously, no need to mention that you have four zone climate control in this cabin. So, different settings you have right from here for vents, for air quality, like the air purifier, if you want to set that, or the ionization, or even you have the ambient light setting and. You know, I personally quite like the ambient lighting in this particular car because it is not too flashy. Now, you know, in something like uh, the Maybach or the S Class, you know, ambient lighting is game there as well. But uh, you know, for someone of my taste, it gets a bit too flashy because there are lights all around. In the Range Rover, you know, you have them on all the right places, right? You have there in the footwells, you have there on the door pads, but still it is not very flashy so after a hectic day at work it kind of sets my mood so i am very okay with that now obviously i have the rear screens as well here and you can use them to watch movie to you know get all the access controls right there to watch netflix so very easy and the meridian sound system that is again one of the major highlights and that is something that i absolutely love inside this cabin very acoustic very premium sound and the bass and the treble are so right that it just sets your mood so yes features you just cannot complain as i said but the highlight remains how well the cabin has been executed uh in terms of upholstery it is top notch you cannot expect anything more in terms of finish because everywhere you brush your hand it feels very upmarket and very premium that sense of sheer opulence is present right here the chrome treatment on the doors the wood veneers or you know the way the switches are executed very nicely done now few things that i want to highlight here that still could have been better because remember this is the range rover autobiography so not still the range topping range rover SV is that this one is still a five seater fifth person can be accommodated right here this armrest will come up and you can have the fifth person right here not very comfortable compared to other seats but still comparatively bit more practical on the flip side you miss out on few features like i don't have a proper shelf to keep my laptop on for that i'll have to use my lap if i'll be working on it and i don't have the champion chiller you get that in the sv it is not offered on the autobiography that said you do get a frizz right here so for uh, even for rear people you have a separate refrigerator right here in the center console you can keep your cold drink cans soft drink cans and water bottles so still kind of useful now speaking of more features again let us come back to the seats you know all seats are cool heated and come with massage function goes without saying these are features we expect in this segment and quite cool so you can access again all that right here from this very screen you have the massage function and i have them on now uh even this feels lovely other than that there are few things that i would you know like to point out that could have been improved for me you know uh the cup holders because you need to take them out this way yes when the armrest will come down these will be covered under the seat and you will need to take them out and that will take some time so that is just small nitpicks other than that this cabin still is very comfortable and has that sheer sense of opulence believe me on a longer commute i am very comfortable and i can spend days in it and munch miles in it even at this seat 
that said obviously i would want to know that how this car drives because ultimately you know it is fun even behind the wheel so let's get and check that out in terms of power obviously you just can't complain but we will get to the performance part in a bit abhi baat karte hain how do you feel behind the wheel of a range rover well if you are someone who has spent almost 4 crore on a car this size believe me there are chances that you won't be in a hurry quite often and this car though it can take good speeds and it can handle that as well but if you are just cruising in it you know you have a better sense of control obviously you know i believe that if you are driving a range rover you are one of those responsible ones so you don't want to exploit your full power and even in this engine if you are cruising at you know lower revs you are just behind the wheel you have the entire hood line spread very evenly right in front of you that's the sight that you will really enjoy it's a lovely view out from here and the cabin it has that sense of serenity it is quite quite literally quite yes you know i'll just show you one thing that quite it is so obviously there is no point discussing on nvh levels fit and finish and everything because everything is top notch and i love the ivory tone on this car and the wood veneer inserts right here on the central console and the chrome done very well the view out from here believe me it is very nicely done and the execution is very refined and very fine so the way it's been executed i really love that and honestly i'm not a big fan of stand alone touch screen but this one is again integrated very nicely you know not very humongous and uh, has all the controls needless to say is very sharp is very responsive and my finger just glides on it so the feedback i am actually loving it and i don't want the haptic mode to be on because honestly the graphics are so decently sized that i don't need them in terms of other ergonomic detail what i have always loved in range rovers are these armrests because with itni zyada that you need them as well and you know the driving position is just very comfortable and something that i am really enjoying also physical buttons for ac control you have the lever here to set your temperature pull it and it turns into fan speed setting push it and push it again it goes back to setting of your seat ventilation so you have all that single access control right here i'm glad that it is not integrated in the touch screen panel and the pv pro system for me works just fine and very nicely now i am able to enjoy all these things because i am cruising you know i have enough time to pay attention to details that this cabin has if i am speeding i won't be able to you know do that because i will need a greater focus on the road i am still doing around 80 km per hour and feels that the car is gliding at 40 uh, undulations it just soaks them you know it glides through all the potholes and here especially at this seat obviously we have spoken uh, about the rear seat experience as well but here believe me you feel them even less for some reason so very nicely done and i am just loving this experience but now let's get to the performance part so the range rover is offered with choice of engine options petrol and diesel the standard range rover gets the 3 liter 6 cylinder units while the autobiography and the sv come with the option of 4.4 liter v8 motor as well the p460e plug in hybrid is limited to just the top of the line range rover sv and comes as a cbu on special order The 3 liter diesel belts out around 341 brake horsepower at 4000 rpm and 700 newton meters of peak torque 
at 1500 to 3000 rpm. Despite tipping the scale at 3390 kg, this behemoth of an SUV does the 0 to 100 km per hour run in a quick 6.3 seconds, in turn clocking a top speed of 234 km per hour. Then comes the 3 litre petrol Range Rover Autobiography VR driving. It churns out 389 brake horsepower at 5500 to 6000 rpm and 550 Nm of peak torque at 2000 to 5000 rpm having quite a long torque ban, the end result of which is it is comparatively faster to triple digit speeds at 6.9 seconds and clocks a top speed of 242 km per hour and that too despite weighing the same 3390 kg. The top of the line motor is the high revving 4.4 litre V8 engine that belts out a good 597 brake horsepower at 5855 to 7000 rpm and 750 Nm of peak torque at 1800 to 5400 rpm. And despite being 3400 kg heavy, does the 0-100 to km per sprint in 4.9 seconds, in turn clocking a top speed of 261 km per hour. Cholo, let's get to the P400 petrol we are driving. It just feels that, you know, you have just got a blow here right in your face and you know, it feels very exciting. Obviously, you feel that more because this is a heavy car. So, in a way, if you know, if you are too much active with the throttle, you'll get a bit of that jolt because the weight of the car. But if you are building on speed in a linear manner, feels even better and more controlled. So, you know, building up on speed, easy overtakes on the highway and just munching miles, all of it come very easy. And then you have the 8-speed gearbox and paddle shifters as well. So the spread of gear, you know, again, is quite well distributed and you just don't feel when the shift happens, especially in D. Yes, in comfort mode, it's very easy and even more relaxing you have all the modes right here so you have your off-road modes eco mode and comfort mode and then just push it and it goes back to auto and handles things all by itself again very easy and if you choose to go off-roading you have the four wheel low again right here very nicely integrated button nice detail i like it that said for off-roading, you will need to, you know, have another set of wheels which has, you know, better profile in the tires because then you'll be able to take that off-road. Taking these stock tires off-road will be a bit risky. Obviously, these can handle rough surfaces and, you know, mild off-roading. But if you choose to go extreme off-road, then you'll have to have better and tires with more profile in them and smaller rim size. But in terms of everything else, like approach angle, departure angle, you just won't have any problem because all of that is pretty well sorted. And obviously, if you need more height, you have the right height setting right here. Go to adjust and you have three settings for ride height. Access, as I just mentioned, when you want to get in the car improves the ingress and egress and then you have the normal ride height for normal cruising and then off-road where the car goes all the way up and you can tackle some tough terrains but can i say the same thing about handling mm, well you know for me it is kind of a mixed package because again when I'm doing reasonable higher speeds, I don't find handling any issue. But remember that this is quite heavy. Yes, this is a heavy car and you cannot expect it to perform like a supercar or even like a sedan of similar price range. So if you are going floating out around corners, you'll have to slow down a bit. But the car maintains its composure if you are at reasonable speeds, changing lanes. So the suspension tend to stiff up a bit and you can manage even reasonable higher speeds pretty well. But what I love is that even when you are going over undulations or 
changing lanes the soft cushioning in the suspension you know that is still there so you know you won't feel any sharp jerk when you are maneuvering and it takes that very easily and very smoothly so that is what i love even about the handling of the range rover and then the steering feedback absolutely no complaint over there because as far as suv standards are concerned this is engaging to drive and that is something that i really like so at lower speeds it's very light yes feather light so turning this car is very easy and when you are speeding up a bit it weighs up very accurately it is a wide car in fact a very wide car but having just the right control on the nose is not a difficult task so that is something you know which actually is very impressive uh that being said in terms of refinement it is spot on now when we talk of the design you know what really surprises me here is that almost similar silhouette and still they have managed to bring in that sense of freshness and newness in the design obviously the iconic range rover silhouette can't be changed but just the finish of it just flush finish right here on the grill you know the silver around the grill right there and the way this headlamp assembly insets into the grill looks very nice and almost just like a single panel also below on the bumper the split air dam right here or on the top the way this hood line has been executed subtle muscle on the side of the car and it gives you just that solid road presence a range rover should so on the road you still can't ignore it and you'll notice that this is not something previous this is something new and something equally imposing we were speaking of road presence right well can it get any better the profile that iconic silhouette is very much apparent and speaking of iconic you have this range rover bar again the finish is very premium has improved from before and you have the autobiography badge right here also very flush finish on the door panels they go inside and improves the aerodynamics of the car 22 inch alloy wheels you have right here the ride quality is something which we cannot complain about because it has got just about enough profile obviously if you want to go off road you will need to upgrade them to better profile tires and slightly smaller rim size but just the flush finish of the panel and then you literally need to walk towards the rear end of the car yes and you have these night highlights right here and in terms of again road presence i think nothing can beat range rover now the rear is where the most significant design changes will come in your vision you have the single piece sort of tail light right here integrates very well with this panel this is finished in piano black and even this looks the same finish but you have tail lights right here so very neatly done and i quite like the integration also very flush finish on the panels right here you have the land rover badge the silver insert on the split tailgate and speaking of split tailgate the hatch goes up this comes down and i can easily relax and have a good sight but speaking of sight the car behind will come to appreciate just the width of it and the track of it because again this looks very bold and very imposing yes in terms of road presence i think there are fewer cars that can beat range rover now we briefly spoke about the luxury cushion of the cabin but now i want to highlight the attention to detail you know in terms of materials that's been used chrome here on the paddle shifters or chrome right here on the air con vents very nicely done and very much up market they feel also just look at the panels and the veneers again quite even right here and wherever you brush your hand you has that sense of opulence right there but the highlight remains this pv pro touchscreen infotainment system quite nicely executed i'm not going to dive too much into details of features because you know features like apple carplay wireless apple carplay and android auto connected tech you have that in cars of much lower segment these days but 
just the choice of color palette you know looks very rich and very premium in that appeal also you have all the information right here on the graphics my finger just glides so the response is very nice the graphics are very sharp and you have the slope assist detail you know what kind of elevation or what kind of downhill this car is handling you have the compass you have wheel information weight sensing so how much water wetting the car is doing energy impact and you have the driving style performance all information that you'll need is right there on the screen and go to the menu you also have vehicle dimension along with other control functions so every detail of all dimensions of the car is right here also what kind of angles this car can handle so approach angle of 26.1 degree the breakover angle of 20.1 degree and the departure angle of 24.5 degree every information is right here this tells you that this long wheelbase version measures over 5 meters in length as well and then you also have the launch controls assistance right here you can just use it and you can get all the power out of this engine so very nicely done and very nicely executed in terms of that opulent appeal again the range rover still is quite spot on so why should you buy the range rover autobiography well look at it this way if you're out in the market to shop for an uber luxury suv and the rolls royce is my box and even the sv seem a bit too expensive the autobiography fits the bill very perfectly and why is that because it is a bit affordable and still gives you all the features is comfortable and has that sheer sense of opulence even road presence it will attract eyeballs anywhere you go so if i am to buy this suv obviously i'll be chauffeur driven throughout the week but during the weekend i'll choose to take the wheel and enjoy my drive